This card is incredible, except for one small thing. Hey, what's up? John Sherratt here. And today I'm going to unbox and benchmark and show you all the details available for this MSI 4090 Gaming X Trio. Stay tuned. Welcome back. If this is your first time here, thank you for joining the channel. Thank you for watching. If you haven't seen some of my other videos, I have already reviewed the MSI 4090 Supreme X and Supreme X Liquid. I've even done a comparison video between the two of them. So when it comes to 4090s, this was a card that has been asked for in the comments where people said, well, what about the Gaming X Trio? So, I mean, thankfully I was able to find one using the methods. I'll post my video how I get these cards. And I got one, it's finally here. Let's unbox it together and let's see what it's all about and see, you know, is it as good? Even though it's mid-tier and not as high-end as the Supreme, does it still hold its own? All right, let's get it open here. All right. Okay. Accessories, GPU holder bracket. A. Oh, very interesting. So I have heard about this that when it comes to the MSI Supremes, it comes with four 8 pin power connector adapter. This one only comes with three. So if you are someone out there who has let's say an older power supply that only has three eight pin power connectors right there. This card may be for you. Uh, I have done a video to prove that on the four eight pin connector 4090s, such as the Asus Tough 4090 I had, you can use only three eight pin connectors if you want, but it does power limit to 450 watts and decrease the performance. So. I did not get a chance to try that with the Supremes, but I'm wondering how well this card will perform against the Supremes if it's only using three. All right. Uh, not much else instructions, cool. Okay. Let's take a peek. All right. I mean, it's pretty cool looking. Um, backside, yeah. MSI logo, nice kind of back plate. Um, it, it feels pretty, pretty thick. Uh, power connector, there's your BIOS switch here. Okay, connectors, standard four connectors, nothing fancy there. Uh, I'm curious when we get this, this, this lid up, the, the car, I'll put, I'll put it into a case soon. Uh, there's kind of like a slash marks that come across here, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, now, I actually like this design uh, versus the 3000 series. Uh, of the same car in, in the Gaming X Trio. I had a 3000 series and it was my most hated 3080 that I owned was the Gaming X Trio. So when this first came out in the 4000 series, I was like, nah, 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 not gonna happen. Uh, but after seeing so many positive reviews on it, I said, okay, cool, let's try it. But yeah, the design itself, I, I like that they changed the design and, and, and I'm all for it. Versus the Supreme, I like the older design, right? The newer design, I'm like, meh, meh. But recently I saw on videocards.com, they have now released an MSI Supreme with the 3000 series design. And I think that's really cool. And I'd love to get my hands on one of those. So. Um, what else to say about this? Let's compare it. I don't have any other 4090s. Oh, here's, uh, here's a 4080 Eagle OC that I just finished reviewing. You can check out that video here. Um, now the 4080s and 4090s are pretty similar in size. Oh, very interesting. Hope we can get that top down here. I'm going to put the 
MSI in front because it is actually smaller. Uh, here, so you can see here from the top that it's, it's probably, ah, it's so similar with these little kind of pegs on the back, these little like sticky out peg things that are for, for heat dissipation. Um, they're pretty much identical in length. Uh, and in width, we'll see kind of what that looks like in this side. Height wise, you can see it's just the eagle is slightly taller by a quarter of an inch. So all in all, I'll stick to my, you know, the 4080s and 4090s are, are pretty similar in size. And I hope the thermals are, uh, I mean, haven't had any yet that have had bad thermals. So. We'll, uh, we'll see with this car. So yeah, I mean, so far pretty cool. Uh, it is definitely a three card slot, even though, which is interesting because that Eagle 4080 is technically a three card slot, but in the bracket, it, it only has two. I'm not sure if they just want to keep it inside the two card, but it's definitely, as you can tell, just, just as thick. So, okay, let me grab my, my Lanley 11 DXL case. Uh, we'll slap it up here and then uh, we'll see how it fits inside and also we'll turn on season lights. It's 100% it's, uh, your choice if you want to use one of these GPU sag brackets. I tried one with the 3080 and it wasn't really necessary. Uh, these cards are now getting so much better at supporting themselves that it, it, it's, it's pretty good. And that's just with one, one uh, screw in, but there we go. Okay, that's in, uh, I mean, pretty good. A couple inches on the side here. I mean, 49 is a huge card, right? We already know that. Uh, but I mean, I, I was doing my tests earlier uh, on my, uh, the other Supremes, I was putting it into an O11D Mini, right? And, and it, it was still fitting well. So, I mean, depending on the size of your case, please check out the numbers so I understand if it'll fit. Know that the 4090 FE absolutely is smaller, uh, but it is just as thick. So here, let me plug the power in, turn this guy on. Okay, I mean, I was hoping you could see a little bit more of this. Hold on, let me see if I can, maybe we can do a, a tilt here and you can see the bottom. Eh, same, I mean, it's exactly what I said about the Eagle. I mean, there's a little bit of RGB lights, which, which is nice, uh, but because it's mounted in a traditional fashion, I mean, it doesn't, it, you don't really see it. I mean, if you're vertically mounted, then yeah, you're probably gonna see the cool slash marks across the front. Uh, let me know if you're more, like if you are vertical mounted or standard mounted. I know with that height uh, 60 case, right? They come with a vertical mount, which is pretty neat. Um, I've pretty much always had mine mounted traditionally. Okay, well, I'm going to move this back onto my desk, run some benchmarks, really put this thing uh, to the test to better understand. My, my big question is how well does it compare to the Supreme models? Three days later. And I'm back. Now, it's been a few days of testing this card and I can absolutely say this card is incredible except for one small thing. Yes, you heard it loud and clear, coil wine. I first experienced coil wine in my Tough 4090 review. And I mean, I would compare these two cards, at, consider them mid-tier cards and directly comparable. Now, did I just pull the short straw and both of the 4090s in that series class both had coil wine? You tell me if your 4090 Gaming X Trio has coil wine and if it sounds like a dying banshee. 
<laughs> if you're enjoying this video, please leave a thumbs up. And if, if you like, you know, you like me and my content with my style, please subscribe. Let's talk price. Now this car here comes in at $1,649 on bestbuy.com. MSI actually has two versions of this card, the, the X Trio and then just the Trio, kind of like the OC and non-OC in the Asus and Gigabyte world. Though I don't really ever see the non-X version, even my old 3080 was a, an X Trio or they even change it to the Z Trio. But back to pricing, I mean this card is only $50 more expensive than a 4090 FE Founders Edition. I mean for 50 bucks you get an AAB card with a pretty cool design on it, lights with three huge fans. I'd say that's pretty cool. Now to make it even better, as I was saying, this is MSI's mid-tier card with the, the Ventus below it and, and the Supreme above it. Now if you compare it to the Asus Tough 4090, which is the competitor, they come in at $1,799. That's a $150 difference. So to me that, that's a pretty good deal. Now I mean yes. All 4,000 series are overpriced. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying compared to paying $1,649 or $1,799 for a very similar spec card, I'm gonna pay $1,649. This bears the question, well, how does it perform? Okay, well, check out these benchmarks here. As expected, it was neck and neck with the Asus Tough on, on pretty much every test. Note that I recently upgraded from my 12900KS CPU to a 13900K, but interesting enough, it made zero difference in the benchmarks. But that's interesting and for another video. All in all, this car was very comparable to the Asus Tough. Uh, and a little bit behind the MSI Supreme X and X Liquid by 2-3%. My takeaway, this card performs just as well as the other 4090s, but it's a lot cheaper. What about overclocking potential? Well, I mean, much like the other 4090s out there, there isn't a lot. There's a 3-5% to boost. Uh, when you do overclock them, which is okay, but I have found the 4080s have definitely a lot more room for OC. Now what uh, specs, OC specs did I use? I mean, I upgraded the core by 200 megahertz on this, bringing it up to 2,940 megahertz, uh, which is very similar to the Tough. And interesting enough though, and this is the first card that when I was OCing the VRAM, I was able to crank the slider all the way to the top. I literally maxed it out at plus 2000 megahertz on the VRAM, bringing it up to 12,501 megahertz. That's the highest I've seen on any card uh, and it seemed to be stable in every test that I ran on it. So I mean, did I win the VRAM silicone lottery? Possibly. Let me know if you're able to upgrade or OC yours as much as this. Noise levels. Now I recently had someone request that I, that I record the, the audio decibel level of these cards as I'm using them to better understand if, if they're really loud. Now this card, like I say, was the second one. I did it with the Eagle OC and this one, I mean, I looked at the ambient temperature of the room and ambient temperature, ambient audio sound level and it was anywhere between 40 and 45 decibels in my office. Now, when I loaded up Speedway Benchmark, and this was the same when I was playing Warzone, it increased up to about 55 to 60 decibels. In my opinion, that was acceptable uh, and, and, and totally fine. But the real question is, how bad was the coil whine? I mean, it, it was bad. And my wife walked in the office and she saw me playing Warzone, and she's like, what is that sound? I mean, it's definitely noticeable. And I mean, spoiler alert, I have returned this card specifically because of the coil wine. When it comes to lighting, there's nothing super special about the card. I mean, as I said, I, I like the design of the, the slashed on the side with the lights, which is super cool. And I think 
that's way better than an Asus Tough, where they kind of just have the Tough logo. Uh, it, it's just it's unique. It's fun. It reminds me of the PNY has the almost the X on it for the 4000 series, similar-ish to that. But uh, you can control all the lighting inside MSI's Mystique. Uh, light software, uh, change all the RGB and that fun stuff. But uh, is it is it as nice as the Supreme? Mm, I like the design more on, on, on the Gaming X myself, but the lighting I say the Supreme kind of beats it. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if you have this car, because the slash is the coolest part, I would highly recommend mounting it vertically if you do have that option. Thermals. Okay, so there has to be at least one downside other than the quiet wine with this car, right? No, no, it, it performed extremely well. I mean, I was really worried the gaming, the 3080 I had, the Gaming X Trio, it was horrible. It was by far the worst card I had for thermals ever. And so when this came in, I was like, Ugh. but it was bang on the exact same as the Supreme. Uh, as far as thermals, nothing to worry about. Uh, totally good. Like to the scores for the core was sitting at high 60s, low 70s, and the VRAM was, was mid 60s all day long. Okay, so what do I think about this card? Well, I mean, it's priced very, very close to 4090FE, which is pretty much the cheapest card you can get. And yet it performs just, just underneath what a Supreme does, but much cheaper. The design is by far my favorite 4000 series design. Yes, I said it. It is my favorite, even more than the Zotec spaceship. <laughs> The only negative thing I can say about this card is the ridiculously loud coil whine. Do all of the 4090 Gaming X trios have coil whine? I highly doubt it. And for all those who believe that the power supply is what causes the coil whine, I mean, I did switch it with two different power supplies and the coil whine was there with both. So I uh, still don't know about that one. Would I recommend this card? Yes, yes, yes. I would absolutely highly recommend this card. If you get one with coil wine, hopefully you can return it and maybe get one without. I think that's kind of hit or miss right now, but know that stock is getting a lot better. I just, just saw, I don't know, probably 60 or 70 of them come into stock on Best Buy DCA just this week. So let me know if this card is the one for you, if you're going with Supreme instead. Uh, I mean, I'd love to hear what's going on. Leave a comment down below. If you're into these type of videos, please subscribe and stay tuned for the next one. No. Hard to believe.